to Daily Reflections with Canon Philip Gray. Hello, everyone, and uh, as you can see, we're, uh, we've brought the uh, we've brought the live streams and the podcasts outside uh, for this week. So this is the um, stream for Tuesday in Easter week. Let us pray. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So today's resurrection of account is the final verses, chapter 16 of St. Mark's Gospel, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early, on the first day of the week, When the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man, dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You were looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Did St Mark really mean to end his gospel like that? Three times Jesus had warned the disciples and the women how this story would end. He would go to Jerusalem, be mocked and killed, and on the third day rise again. So on Easter morning they go to the tomb, clearly expecting to anoint a corpse, in contrary to his words. And when they find it empty, they run away in complete fear. Over the years, many have tried to construct theories saying that Sir Mark really didn't mean to end so abruptly. Some have conjectured that he died suddenly before he could write any more. Others have suggested the last bit of the papyrus got torn off. None of this will really do, as all the early manuscripts are consistent. And this conundrum at the end simply fits in with the rest of Mark's enigmatic Gospel. Throughout his Gospel, Mark has been telling us how groups of people and individuals are responding to what Jesus has done. Crowds are amazed, but their amazement leads nowhere. Scribes and Pharisees are continually looking for an argument and to bring him down. The disciples continually misunderstand and get it wrong. Only a few individuals, all of whom are outsiders and who respond in good faith, come out of this gospel well. A woman with a hemorrhage, a ruler with a poorly daughter, a Syrophoenician woman and a deaf man. All these come to Jesus with exceptional faith when they should really have been nowhere near the rabbi. Their responses are the ones Mark wants us 
to take note of. So the fact that the women who follow Jesus have not really heard and don't respond as we might have hoped is simply consistent with much else in the Gospel. In literary terms, Mark seems to be playing with us. The irony is that this Gospel has been written about the good news of Jesus Christ. So despite women fleeing from the tomb, scared for their lives, and saying nothing to anyone, and despite too there being no accounts of Jesus appearing to anyone, this Gospel has been written. Someone, somewhere, must have responded to the angels of the tomb and have said something to someone. That seems to be St Mark's point. How are you going to respond? There is another point to this too. Apart from these exceptional individuals, nearly everyone in this gospel is a failure. The crowds fail in their amazement. The religious leaders fail in their defensiveness, contention and cynicism. The disciples fail in their lack of understanding and resolve. The women, compassionate and faithful as they are, still haven't heard or do as Jesus asks. Jesus does commend a poor widow too, who puts two copper coins in a collection box. She is to prepare to offer what life she has. The point is this. God overcomes our failure. It is not about how we have responded. It is about how we are going to respond. The meaning of being a disciple in Mark is that you and I are learners. We have to keep learning how to respond. And this ending too confirms this in its circularity. When you get to the end of the tomb, and when you get to the end with its empty tomb, and its cliffhanger of fearful flee fleeing women, there is then only one place to go. St Mark is inviting us back to the beginning, that we may begin again and read afresh all these responses and failures and find ourselves in them. And another strange feature of this Gospel then begins also to make sense. Many a time Jesus performs a healing miracle and then everyone is told to keep it a secret. Again, it feels ridiculous, a sort of joke. The amazed crowds that have just witnessed what has happened are bound to go and talk about it. So why is it said? Because none of this makes its true sense until the Son of Man has given up his life completely and died. Only then could a real and valid response begin to what is this good news. There is no outward resurrection miracle in Mark. Rather, resurrection faith is proclaimed throughout the Gospel. So Mark doesn't want to present the resurrection as a separate, detached event from the rest of Jesus' life and our lives. Rather, the resurrection should be the framework in which we read and hear the whole of his Gospel. Our present situation requires a response from every one of us. The Easter message of Mark frames this question of our response in a sharp way. But a space has opened up for us this Easter to ask ourselves what we might learn afresh, learn anew, as Jesus' learners, disciples. 
any past failures we regret, place us in the great company of those that Christ came to redeem. And true faith in the risen Lord gives us the power today and tomorrow to transform our lives and the lives of others for good. Let us pray. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered on the cross, who reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ be with me. Christ within me. Christ behind me. Christ before me. Christ beside me. Christ to win me. Christ to comfort and restore me. Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Christ in quiet, Christ in danger. Christ in hearts of all that love me. Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. So may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect. Blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for listening to today's edition of the Daily Reflection Podcast. If you would like to listen to more episodes, they will be available on your usual podcast platform. Alternatively, all the podcasts and live streams uh, services and reflections can be found on the St Margaret's Ilkley website, stmargaretsilkley.org.